Welcome back to another informative and exciting episode of podcast where we cover everything cannabis and hemp. If you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, please do so, as this will help us sustain our channel. And remember to cannabis responsibly at all times. Welcome to another episode of podcast. I'm sitting here with the Wonder Woman of the cannabis and hemp industry, and I shall let her introduce herself to you. Gee, Mo, thank you. This is really a tall order because uh, I have a, a long journey and yeah. I've lived on the earth for more than 50 years. And that's why I'm calling you Wonder Woman. And uh, this journey, at some parts of this journey, I always wondered why I was doing what I was doing because it didn't make sense. But eventually what began to make sense is that everything we do in our lives leads to a point where you find that you are on purpose. Uh-huh. And it is at that point I realized when I was on purpose and I was running my own medical spa in Rosebank. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and I was headhunted to do the first cannabis license in South Africa. The first cannabis license in South Africa. The medical okay. cannabis license for South Africa, uh, which I attained for the House of Hemp. Uh, we started it in late 2017 when the guidelines came out. And we subsequently were together on a journey and I was up and down KZM assisting uh, the House of Hemp and meeting their team. Uh, and for them it was also new, and for all of us. So for me it was a very beautiful journey and one that will always stay in my memory uh, and photographs of that journey. But having said that, eventually I then decided that if um, I am privileged and honoured to have this occasion of getting the first licence, then let me explore my purpose further. Uh And I took a flight to America and went to the Las Vegas Cannabis Conference. Okay. I came back from um, a few months later from uh, overseas because my family live overseas, so I spent an extended time there. And when I came back, I had all this knowledge in my head and I didn't know what to do with this knowledge and I decided I was going to have an investors cannabis conference. Oh. So in, I'm going back two, three years now maybe, mm-hmm. um, that I held and uh, I've collaborated with a, uh, a couple of resources and we put it together at the Slow Lounge about 20 investors okay and so it was just for the investors mainly investors okay and the people and the resources I pulled together were also involved in the cannabis industry and because it's an emerging industry they were very excited to join me on this venture because they would also learn <laughs> yeah, yeah so I, I then led me to the Sutu and helping and, and I earmarking land in the Sutu nothing really fantastic happened in the Sutu except that I actually met a lot of cannabis uh, growers yes and yes 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 yeah, yeah. And also, I actually had the privilege of uh, meeting, uh, I think it was uh, one of the big um, companies, um, CEOs, uh, Andre uh, yeah. Rothman. Okay. Uh, there, and I also ended up meeting um, an international cannabis enthusiast who has, uh, does land race. Okay. Um, Arjun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wrote an article about him in my magazine at the time, my, uh, my website, um, and on my Cannabis Hour website. I came back, um, I've, I've not stopped being busy since. I, it's been an incredible journey. The journey has taken me to a point where I realise I'm mastering compliance in the cannabis industry. So so you basically, that's why I call you Wonder Woman. You, you, you are the queen of compliance. You basically assist people in obtaining their licences. One of my clients said, don't you know Wanda, she's the mayor of cannabis. <laughs> Okay then, okay then. I didn't know how to react, but now I can laugh about it. <laughs> no, which is a good thing, because you've done so much for so many people. Um, can you just explain to, 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 to the viewers, because a lot of people want to understand exactly who Sapra is, and all these licenses, and why it's needed. Um, can you explain to the viewers who Sapra is? Yes, Sapra is an organization mm-hmm. that um, govern. Okay all health products and medicine in South Africa. So in other words, they are the medicine regulator. Mm -hmm. They fall under the Department of Health and be mandated by Parliament. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so that's who they are. Okay. Um, When they put out the guidelines, they create the rules. So if they, they, they're more of a policing operation in terms of, if they get complaints, they'll investigate the complaints. So they will go down and they will close cannabis sites if they're operating illegally, for instance. Okay. Okay. Uh, you will also submit anything that has a uh, more than 2% THC to SAPRA. 
no. for an application for a license. Okay. Anything below 0.2% would go to the Department of Land Reform and Rural Development. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Under agriculture and then <coughs> hemp. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that's the difference. Okay. Of, at, 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 in the beginning, they weren't sure what to do. So everything was for, at, in SARPA. Mm. But I think they, they, because they were also on a learning curve about cannabis, mm. like the mm. rest of the world. Like, you know, I was about to say that. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, they eventually got to a stage where they, uh, people were applying for hemp licenses in SARPA and nothing was happening. Two years later, they still didn't have a hemp license after paying, after doing stuff. And, they, and that's when they decided to move it out into agriculture. Okay. At okay. the end of the day, if you consider that a cultivator is actually to do the land, mm. cultivation on the land, whether it's blueberries, whether it's cannabis, whether it's hemp, you know, or apples, mm. you actually, it's, it's agriculture. Yeah. But why then uh, do SARPA handle medical cannabis? Because it becomes a medicine mm. for human consumption. Okay. Also because cannabis, uh, not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And the one size that fits all is if you take it or I take it, we both have a different journey on cannabis. That is so true. <laughs> that and that's so what true. people need to understand. But now, if um, I remember once going to a party, and most of us were drinking in this bra, um, and somebody was passing a joint around. And um, I was a novice, so I was observing this. And I, but I saw this guy who was busy rah rah on alcohol and everything, and he said, oh, I'll have some of that, and grabbed it. And two minutes later, he was on the floor having a seizure. Because he was mixing the two. Oh, mixing the two. So there's so many unknown factors about cannabis that we don't know. Mm. There are over 250 compounds in the cannabis plant. And THC being the most commonly known mm. uh, active ingredient mm. is the psychotropic effect on the body. Okay. And so um, if you give somebody a THC, anything can happen. You don't know what drugs they are, how medication they're taking, uh, and you're just giving it to So that is why it is going under the Department of Health, and that is why you need, it's a very stringent, robust process to make, do an application for medical cannabis. That is why it's being regulated, basically. And I help the clients walk that journey. Um, I help them to understand what's involved, what they need to get that license. Mm. The license can take uh, between, depending how much, uh, how quickly I get the documentation back from the client. Oh, okay. Okay, so the documentation is the order. Mm. But that order of documentation starts, where's the business plan? Okay. Where's the finance? Mm -hmm. Where's the proof of concept? Mm -hmm. Where is the, um, the site plan? Mm -hmm. The farm plan? Mm -hmm. Is it an indoor grow? Is it a greenhouse grow? Is it an outdoor grow? What are you wanting to do? Mm -hmm. So there's so many uh, areas of, of, so I usually go in and say, let's have a meeting and identify what do you want to do and why do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Very important. If you don't know why you want to do cannabis. You then, shouldn't even be there. Yes. Because it's like any other business, it's an emerging industry, there are going to be many, many more challenges than all the other industries that have been there for years and years. Mm. But it also then walks on the side of the pharmaceutical industry, because now we're making product, we're also making drugs mm. for cancer, uh, epilepsy, uh, insomnia, anxiety. Well, well, those would be health products, okay. because they would be CBD. Mm. So now what's the difference between CBD and THC? There's no psychotropic effect. Mm -hmm. So we know that uh, CBD was taken off the Schedule 6 by the United Nations as well. Then when they voted, CBD was now the complementary medicine. Okay, um, That's how it's been sold, free sale. Mm -hmm. Currently in South Africa under the Act. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if that will be, how long that will be, because we're waiting for policy now. Yes. <laughs> okay. And um, can you explain to the viewers how much is it and, and how many, because you spoke of so many licenses, how many licenses can one actually have before we talk about the pricing? How many licenses are there that one should be obtaining? No, that, that's a, um, a very broad question. Okay. Because when you say how many licenses, well, why do you want so many licenses? What do you want to do with so Let's many licenses? Let's say one person doesn't want to grow, but they want to be a distributor. Obviously, they have uh, to have a license okay, for that. So, yes. Yeah. So, so uh, if they want to distribute. So the, in South Africa, a lot of people started importing yeah. because they didn't want to be a cultivator. Okay. And the cultivation uh, still uh, in its preparatory stages. 
do people really know what they're doing when they're cultivating here? Mm-hmm. So that in its, it's still emerging. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yes, they say, oh, but I am the master cultivator. Mm. But how? Because you've been working in the illegal market <laughs> for 20 years and growing it. South Africa, uh, Africa uh, has 25% of the world illegal market in cannabis. 25%? Yeah, yeah from the so, United yeah. Nations states. So you can imagine how many people are member, even in Lesotho, their livelihood was to sell the cannabis to South Africa. In Swaziland for many, many years. So now we now things have evolved in the last since 2017. So now there's a more of a balance starting to happen between the legal market and the illegal market. And obviously now a lot of people are still being scammed and there's things going on, especially in Africa, but it's starting to, to level the playing fields a little more because we are pushing for legalization. Yeah. Okay. And people, and also the consumer, is becoming more aware and conscious of what he wants and needs. And therefore, he's saying, I want it like this, and I want a product like that, or I want um, a flower head, you know, or yeah. I want a, a CBD capsule. Mm. So they are now are bringing it to the forefront where we now are leveling the playing fields between the illegal and the because yeah. people Because yeah. the consumer is becoming more aware. More aware. And yeah. there is starting to, education is starting to, to move around. But it's only moving around in terms of the fact that you've got people now wanting to get into the business. Mm. So I have a couple of clients that um, they, they, they pay me uh, to check their labels okay. uh, that they're putting out there. They pay me to, to um, vet, scrutinize uh, product inserts of the CBD products. Mm-hmm. So that's what I also do. So I do, um, besides the compliance of getting licenses, if you want a medical cannabis license because you want to grow and have an indoor facility. You must think very carefully about why you're doing it and what you're doing it because this is a journey on its own. Mm, very um, tedious. Well, you you have to be ready and in for it, and you have to also have the right people in place for it. Which are can can you just That's number about? one, the yeah. investor. Okay, the investor. The investor. How how much more or less does one need? Well, I look at one of my medical cannabis sites has spent 70 million. 70 million? In the last couple of years. Yes. In a couple of years, a couple of years, two, just in two years. Well, no, I, don't, I don't know how long they've been allowed, but I've been with them since about 2019. Oh, wow. So, let's look at what we need. 70 million. The land. Cosy. The security. Double fencing. Mm. Cameras, guards. To take one shipload of cannabis out of the facility, it's 45 miles of rain would say a company like Fidelity Bonds to the airport. 45 miles. For one shipment of medical cannabis moving in a container to the airport for export. So if that is just one day in the day of cannabis, do you understand the, the, the level of business we're looking at? So if you're looking at a lot of interested parties to get involved but don't even have the capacity to drive the investor. Mm. So what are the things that the investor will look for? ESG. What's ESG? Environment, social, and governance. And if you haven't got this on your agenda, plus your laborious plans and proof of concept, you're never going to get anywhere. Mm. In fact, you'll find that probably two-thirds of the people that have invested in cannabis since 2017 are going to fall. Sure. Uh, because they, they're not sure what they're doing. So there's a third that will survive. And that's on the medical cannabis side. Mm-hmm. So there's three grades of medical cannabis. Triple cannabis, cannabis, yeah. A, double A, and A. What is the difference? So triple A is indoor facility, medical. Okay. Okay, go straight into a pharmaceutical company to make an APR, active pharmaceutical ingredient, for a drug or for a, a health product. Okay, what does an APR do? Stabilizes the molecule yeah. in the plant mm-hmm. or the compound. Double grain would be greenhouse. So you would still have to have controlled lighting, controlled air movement, airflow, etc. So it's still quite costly. Okay. And the A would be other outdoors. Or in immense. Okay. Oh, so you can have it outdoor? No, you can't. Not oh. medical cannabis. Oh, not medical. Okay. So, that, so those are your grades. Yeah. Okay. 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 But now you're going to get what you call the bootstrapped grade. 
you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons below. We would also appreciate your comments. And remember to cannabis responsibly at all times.